everybody. Welcome to another episode of Trail House with Sean here. Now, one of the things I've been wanting to do for a while, I finally have an opportunity to do it today. It's been raining outside, and I've really always wanted to actually truly test this out to see actually how well it would work. I have a wind jacket here. It's a wind-resistant jacket, not waterproof. Uh, what I have done is I have washed this jacket, and I have treated it with Nick Wax TX Direct Tech uh, Spray. What this is is a water resistant spray. It's a, known as a DWR or durable water repellent. A lot of stuff comes stock with it, but I've been using this jacket for a while, so I wanted to clean it and retreat it. Uh, and I did kind of a generous spray on this. So I did two, two treatments on this jacket just to see how well it would hold up compared to uh, Innovate's waterproof running jacket. And this is actually using a laminate, not a coating on the inside. So it's actually a very durable uh, treatment on the inside of the jacket. And then all of the seams are actually taped as well. So this is a fully 100% waterproof running jacket, right Watson, versus a wind jacket that's just been treated with the TX Direct here. So when what I'm gonna do is to really figure out how much water actually went through this jacket, I'm actually using one of Innovate's really lightweight thermal fleeces here on the inside of the jacket. So this jacket's fully dry. We're gonna weigh it to see what it's like before I go on a run, weigh it after the run in this jacket, dry it again, weigh it, make sure it's the same weight, and again, go running in this jacket. The rain's pretty consistent right now. It's supposed to be for the next few hours before the sun goes down. So we're gonna see really how much water goes into this jacket in just a short run. We're just gonna do a little one mile run, probably no more than about 10 minutes, and we'll see what that's gonna look like with, uh, with both these jackets on. So let's find out how well this works. So I'm weighing this Innovate fleece here, and we're all zeroed out, so let's see where this weighs at in before our first run. All right, 5.98 ounces. So that's what we're gonna be going off of. All right, so yesterday I told you it was raining, but I was having some uh, problems with my camera, so I ended up uh, having to get that fixed and taken care of. So it's no longer raining. It is now dumping snow. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to spend about 10 minutes outside here seeing how these jackets perform compared to one another. And we'll see how that goes. All right, so, so far, it's been about four or five minutes and uh, we're still feeling really dry. Um, you can see the snow's actually just kind of landing on it. It's definitely melting a little bit, but it's beating up. It's about 35 out, so it's a pretty wet snow. but it's only been snowing for about three hours and it's we've definitely got about three inches of snow on the ground here in Reno. As you can see, but so far, so good. I can't tell if I'm getting wet on the inside, but it looks like it's just building up and beating off all the clothing here, which is, again, what waterproof clothing is supposed to do. So, I'll spend another five or six minutes outside here. Got my timer going. And uh, I'll jump back inside and weigh the uh, undershirt. So one of the great things about waterproof jackets, even though they're still really thin, they will trap a little more heat than a jacket that isn't waterproof, it's just shell. So even though I'm really wearing just like a really thin, Full thermal and a really lightweight fleece underneath this shell. I'm not running, I'm not putting out any real major body heat and I'm comfortable. Now if I was running, I'd definitely be warm in something like this. And it's, like I said, it's about 35 out right now. And it's definitely dumping snow. So just got a few more minutes here and uh, go back inside and see if the uh, 
fleece underneath, soaked up any water. All right, so the timer just went off. So I just spent the 10 minutes outside. Well, let's see. That's the other nice thing about shells is you can just shake the moisture off, whether it's water or in this case, snow. And it'll pretty much be dry, not almost dry. So let's see uh, how we did here. We're gonna go weigh this fleece underneath and see how much water it absorbed, if any. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what uh, this weighs, if it's any different. Yep, it's a little heavier. 6.5 ounces, 6.05 ounces. So probably my guess would be mostly, if not all, perspiration. Ooh, I almost forgot to tell you guys, if you're ever curious about the products that I'm using, the clothing I'm wearing, and the equipment, please, you can always ask a question, but I will always leave a link below to those particular products in every video that I drop so you know what exactly I am wearing and the products that I am using. Also, if you guys ever have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment sections below. I look forward to reading those and responding when I can. All right, you guys, so now that we get the results from the waterproof jacket, I just threw on just our wind shell here. And uh, we're gonna see how this jacket with a DWR compares to an actual waterproof jacket and uh, see what happens. So start my timer here for 10 minutes. And let's see how we do. So now one of the things you'll notice with just like a wind shell, when you're hovering in the 30s and it's snowing and you don't need a lot of layers on and your body heat's definitely escaping through the shell, you're gonna get the snow melting. What happens is that when it starts melting, you actually end up getting um, that moisture starts to permeate through the fabric and starts wetting your under layers. So even with the durable water repellent, once that melts and starts to saturate, you're gonna definitely start getting wet. And I've only been outside for four minutes. So you're already seeing, you know, the snow's standing on the outside, but when it starts melting, it's gonna start penetrating this fabric. So yeah, it's been about eight minutes now. Ooh, snowflake in the eye. It's been about eight minutes and I'm definitely getting saturation on the sleeves here, the shoulders, and probably the top of the head with this wet snow. And again, it's piling up. It didn't start snowing until about 10 a.m. this morning. And it's only about 1.30, so we've got probably yeah, good four inches. Here's my hand. So we got about four inches of snow there already that's been piling up so it's time to start towing some sleds and snowboards and skis behind the car well perfect timing the uh, timer just went off right as I got back to the door here so definitely seeing that saturation of snow on the sleeves here. It's getting pretty, uh, definitely snowing pretty heavy out. It's the first super heavy snow we've had since uh, I moved here, so it's pretty fun. All right, so yeah, super wet, shaking everything off. Uh, you can definitely see we're just saturated here and it's not just dancing off like the uh, waterproof garment anymore. Fine. Your guess is as good as mine, probably what's gonna be going on underneath here. Um, so we will take a peek and see what the results are once I take this stuff off and weigh it. Back in here, so I just took the shell off after everything. And one thing you can notice here is, yeah, the water's beating up like it should after with a DWR in certain places, but you definitely could see it's saturating 
in areas where you have the heavy snow accumulation show. The shoulder area, the sleeves, right? You can see the difference in color where it's dry versus wet here on the top of the arms and the forearms all the way down to the wrists here. So that's the outside of the jacket as well as the head. So did really well beating up on the top, but what you're gonna notice is on the inside, again, this was just walking around after 10 minutes, you could see that the water actually started coming through. And that was with really out doing anything hard or extreme on the sh on the wind shell here. So again, this is not a waterproof jacket. It's just treated with a durable water repellent spray. So let's weigh the undershirt now. All right, so one of the other things um, I noticed before weighing this piece is definitely damp on the forearms, the top of the shoulders. Uh, you can see a little bit of discoloration, but you definitely can feel it in this piece already versus the waterproof shell wasn't wet underneath at all. And so um, definitely assuming that this is gonna weigh a little bit more after we uh, take this piece off and throw it in the scale there behind me. So yeah, definitely that. The top of the beanie is a little wet too, just from the hood. And again, a little bit of the saturation there, but definitely the shoulders and the forearms uh, are a little moist. So they're not soaking wet, but it definitely has some water in it. So we're gonna pop this sucker off now and put it on the scale and see what happens. All right, so we've got our wind jacket treated. Now, big thing on that, shoulders on that feel damp already. This jacket's pretty much already dry. And what I'm noticing is that definitely the shoulders are already pretty damp. Pits are dry, so it wasn't really sweating much, but yeah, the forearms in this are wet. So I'm assuming it's gonna be a little bit heavier. Oh, there we go. Let's see where we're at. So yeah, 6.35 ounces. So it's about three ounces heavier than it was when we, than the waterproof jacket, or than the waterproof jacket was. So this definitely didn't hold out the water even with the water repellency in such short period of time. All right guys, so after testing out both these jackets and weighing my fleece layer to see how much water this absorbed from the outside. Um, that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. So the fleece jacket before the run came in at 5.98 ounces. And after the run, we weighed it and it ended up at 6.5 ounces. So it didn't even gain uh, an ounce of moisture. And pretty much everything that it gained was probably due to some uh, additional just sweat from, from me. That's really probably what weighed it out, even though it was a short enough run. Uh, so this didn't really gain much at all. It gained less than an ounce. Um, going to the water resistant jacket that was treated um, with the same thing, and again, I dried it, we weighed it again, and it came out to the exact same weight. Uh, we tested it out. So again, before the run, the fleece weighs 5.98, ounces. So after the run wearing the wind jacket that was treated, this jacket came in at 6.35 ounces. So it actually gained about four and a half ounces of moisture. So you can see it was a pretty big difference. The other things that we saw obviously in the video too was that this jacket wasn't wetting out at all. None of the water droplets were really saturating the uh, face fabric. It was all beating up nicely on the outside of the jacket and running off versus after just a few minutes of running in this jacket, it was definitely starting to wet out along the shoulders and the forearms, uh, just some of the areas where the water is gonna get most heavy um, on your jacket, whether you're walking or running. So um, in emergency situations, for sure, for a few minutes, you can probably get away with uh, a wind jacket, treat it with a water repellent spray. But really, ultimately, if you're gonna go out in the elements and you want something to perform really, really well, you definitely want to invest in a good waterproof running jacket. And if you want to know more about how to wash and treat your garments, 
please check out the link to that video below in my how to section. Hey guys, thank you again for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell icon to be notified when new videos become available.